Hello, and welcome back to Project Apollo, my series on a cattle seed world. Seed worlds are speculative evolution projects where a planet is seeded with Earth life, which is then left to evolve and diversify in this new context. On planet Apollo, these life forms were cattle, brought to the planet by technologically advanced humans. After an unknown event, these humans disappeared, leaving the cattle to fend for themselves. Alongside some carefully selected plants and invertebrates, these cattle were left to fill every niche on the planet, as we began to see in episode 1. And one niche that they've begun to fill is carnivory. Before we continue, I'd like to remind you to smash that like button and consider subscribing. It's free, and you can always change your mind. And while you're there, consider leaving a comment. I've also set up a Patreon, and I'll be using some of the support for this project, such as commissioning artwork and buying equipment. I'd appreciate any support, and just watching these videos is certainly enough. I also might put some exclusive or early content on there at some point, so you can find a link to that in the description. Anyway, enjoy the rest of the video, and have a great day. Apollo's herds have grown truly numerous. Many cattle have even taken to semi-aquatic lifestyles just to find enough food, and specialization has begun. However, it's been about a million years since the initial seeding, and a new life form has appeared, true carnivores. However, cattle aren't carnivores. They lack upper teeth in favor of a dental pad like other ruminants, such as goats and sheep. They also have hooves instead of claws, and guts designed to digest grass. Eating a rabbit or a scrap of carrion every now and then is one thing. Hunting and catching adult megafauna is something else entirely. But to survive in the midst of competition, a clade of cattle will have to make the difficult journey to obligate carnivore. This opportunity cannot be missed. Step 1 is evolving the capacity to consume and digest meat. With carrion easily found everywhere on this world distinctly lacking in efficient scavengers, the path is pretty straightforward. Grass is actually harder to digest than meat, since it's less similar to the material a carnivore is already made of. As eating carrion becomes more common, the gut's microbiome may change in some cattle species. If they adapt to heavily supplement their diets with scavenging, and easy prey like the occasional calf or elderly cow, their digestive tracts may grow shorter. This leaves more room for muscles, and space for a lighter, faster build. But catching carrion or calves is a lot easier than killing an adult animal. Step 2 is evolving an efficient method of dispatching prey. As I previously mentioned, cattle lack upper incisors. Gumming your prey is useless. Trampling or toppling may be dangerous to prey, considering the size of many of these predators, but it's inefficient at best. Cattle do already have a weapon, however. Horns. But no predator on Earth hunts with horns. This may be because they're too bulky for swift maneuvers, or because they block eyesight. Or, perhaps charging into a large animal head first isn't the best of ideas. The nearest equivalent might be saber-teeth, but even then, most saber-toothed predators were likely ambush hunters. Even as the grass evolves to be taller on Apollo, ambush hunting isn't very viable for a megafaunal predator, nor is it usually as productive as chasing prey down. Despite these difficulties, early carnivores will have to make do with what they have. If horns are bad as weapons, then they must be made as efficient as possible. An upwards pitch from the skull could allow for a robust stab, while still allowing the cattle to eat. These horns will need to be smooth, and sharper than teeth, which may prove difficult since horns grow from the base rather than the tip. Overall, these predators won't be efficient. They'll rely on brute strength and charging their prey to skewer them, and often may resort to tackling victims to the ground and trampling them. Tearing meat will also be a chore without upper incisors. They'll be opportunistic beasts, and generally not numerous. As time passes, some cattle may begin shortening their jaws to bring their molars towards the front. Several of these molars may evolve to resemble crude upper incisors, growing pointed to tear meat. In time, cattle will adapt to dispatch prey with these teeth, growing larger heads and stronger bites for restraining and killing their meals. Without a reliance on horns, they can abandon their massive sizes and charging-oriented builds, opting for more agility, endurance, and speed. This new wave of predators will prove an issue for the horned carnivores, pushing them back into the niches of ambush hunters. Some common traits among both groups will be longer legs and swifter builds, along with muscular necks for sturdy headbutts and powerful bites. Their eyes will move to the fronts of their faces, like most carnivores, to allow for depth perception. Camouflage may also be of benefit, with patterns meant to fit in with the grasses. As these carnivores reach their maximum population, the previously overcrowded prairies of Apollo will become more spacious. The herds will have to re-evolve defensive strategies, and while competition will still be fierce, populations may shrink slightly. A tide pool without stirrupfish gets taken over by mussels as they choke out other animals and plants, but a tide pool with starfish is extremely diverse. 
When predators are introduced to Apollo, diversity will also increase, as cattle evolve new body plans to avoid being on the menu. Thanks for watching. I originally planned to make only one episode on this era of diversity, but I found that going into more detail was far more satisfying, for me at least. Leave a comment if you have any thoughts on this episode. I'm certainly no expert in cattle, and some of the comments on episode 1 massively inspired how the evolution of carnivores on Apollo played out. I might be exploring aquatic, filter-feeding cattle next. Again, I'd like to ask you to consider contributing to my Patreon if you're in a position to do so, and subscribe if you want to see more content like this. Anyway, thanks for watching, have a great day, and I'll see you next time.